I'm, okay. I'm running for school board again against one of the, the board's biggest supporters of charters. Um, she's been on that board for 10 years and she even served as president of that board. Yeah, I'm, I'm running. She, she pushes charters on the basis that those schools are, are, that the public schools are failing and the parents need a choice. It seems to me if you've been on the board for 10 years, you need to look someplace else, like perhaps your own actions. So what's interesting about coming to a conference like this is you get to hear the experience of other parents and teachers and, and what charters have done in different districts. And I hear a lot of similarities, but um, LA kind of leads the way. Currently there's 250 charter schools in our district and 130,000 students. So pretty much where LA goes, everybody else is, is sure to follow. Um, Broad's plan to spend $490 million to reach 50% market share in his words. Um, and his, it's, gonna, it's basically to take over the uh, public education system. And it's with the goal of serving as a model for all large cities to follow. So we're the test case, and so we're fighting back. <sighs> So when the, charters, um, the charter was put into law, it was to, quote, provide vigorous competition with the public school system to stimulate continual improvements in all public schools. But the LAUSD board doesn't compete. Instead, Steve Zimmer, who's supposed to be a friend of public schools, calls them our charter partners. Michelle King, our superintendent, called for traditional public schools and charters to work together. That's not competition. And as they buddy up to the charters, the charters do everything to bankrupt public schools. So we're continuously under threat of bankruptcy because we're losing students. But not only that, the charters take away the easiest to educate students. So when we talked about before the pipeline, Two of my daughters who are on the autism spectrum and need special education services, they probably would be considered gunk in those pipes. Charters would just put some Drano in there and get rid of them, rather than giving them the services they need and the education that they need. Um, so the LAUSD is left with them and the higher costs. So 12.7% of students in the LAUSD are special education students. 10% are in charters. But that doesn't tell the whole story because charters um, have a knack for identifying um, special needs that suddenly kids need because they're easy to deal with. Because they're still in a general education classroom, but they can say, we're serving special education students. So my kids have severe to, uh, severe to moderate to severe disabilities, which are the costliest ones to serve. That's the ones the charters aren't taking care of. Then you have the problem of, of, of suspensions. Charter schools um, suspended more kids in every category, elementary, middle, and high schools, in a 2013 study. So when they end up back in the public school, those kids need more services, more expensive for the district, the district's um, cost per student goes up. Then the, our newest board member, Scott Schmerlson, he used to be a principal and talked of continuously, right before testing time, miraculously kids would show up saying, the school said I wasn't really a good fit at the charter, and so I'm here. So then that causes another problem because with, with, with the, the, um, their test scores go down, then all of a sudden, and charters are going up because they've canceled out the students, not because they're doing a better job, then more parents want to send their kids to charters. So it's a self-fulfilling self prophecy. So in the last elections, the charter spent $2.3 million to get their candidates elected. They failed in one case and succeeded in another. When they spend that much money, one of the end results is there's no accountability. The charter school division is run by a, an ex-staff member of the California Charter School Association. And personally, I've, I've complained about stuff that I've documented, and he wants nothing to do with it. So we've had some disastrous outcomes to that. Um, back in October, the charter school division ordered a notice to cure for El Camino Charter High School, but then did nothing to follow up on it. It wasn't until a reporter looked into it that in May it came out that their principal had spent $100,000 on the school's credit card on first class airfare, expensive dinners, 
and also the travel and hotel for him to go to the NAACP, uh, the, no, the, the basketball finals. He's a scout for the, the, in his spare time, he's a scout for the Spurs. So the charter school was paying for him to do his moonlighting job. Um, our neighborhood school is Granada Hills Charter High School. They build themselves as the largest charter high school in the country. Um, before it was a charter, it was a public school. It was a perfectly great public school, had a great reputation, but they managed to convince people to um, convert them to a charter. That's our neighborhood school. My, one of my daughters goes there. Look through their, um, their financials. They've taken five transfers from the Associated Student Body Account, which is supposed to be held in trust for the students. They've taken out five transfers, some even called loans, to their, to their general fund without anybody's permission. So they're basically borrowing money from the students, but not really borrowing because they have control of it. So far, I've reported that to the district. Nothing's been done. So there's no, no accountability. Those are just some of the examples. Then we have Prop 39. And when it comes to competition, the California Charter School Association, they know how to compete. And they know how to take the district to court. So they're forcing these co-locations. And still, our board is, is cozying up to them. One of their um, the, the representatives they spent $2.5 million on, Ref Rodriguez, used to own the puck schools, or run the pups, puck schools. And um, now he's, he, he just passed a resolution at the last board meeting of the year to, to make it a little easier for, for charter schools to, to co-locate. So until we get some, some significant action, our, our school board is, is not pushing back on these charters. They're not competing. And therefore, I have to ask the charter schools, where's that competition you promised? Thanks. I'm Michael Dominguez. I was a career teacher until uh, 2014. I started teaching in 85. Uh, the big problem, well, one big problem that teachers have is that our unions are not fighting back. Others have said this earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. Others have. Okay, others have, have referred to this, but UTLA actually seems to be taking, well, not seems to be, is taking an active role in purging our ranks of older teachers. Um, others have referred to tenure or permanent status in California, and that confers upon a teacher rights to due process. Now, these rights to due process just like in court, require that you have a good defense. Every local in CTA covers their members with the group legal services, except for UTLA. So UTLA has, um, oh, a huge number of teachers. We were as high as 43,000. And now with uh, drop in enrollment and uh, attrition, we're down to 33,000 teachers as compared to what Christian Jones told us, uh, 1,600 in uh, Richmond, it's easier to pick off one teacher <coughs> at one part of the city and then another part and back and forth without the rest of them knowing. But our union plays into it. They actually actively bully teachers. If you're accused of anything and you go to the union, a teacher is told, well, you can't win. You might as well resign. And the first thing they ask you is, how close are you to retirement? Well, none of that is, a, is really the business of a union. A union, as far as I'm concerned, has as its primary purpose to protect teachers or protect its workers. Now, teachers are not stupid. Uh, we might be shy in retiring sometimes, but we all are educated. A great way to get rid, uh, to make more money available for charters and privatization is to get rid of the expensive employees. And that means people who've been working 20, 30 years. Um, let me see. Where was I? Oh, defense can actually cost as much as $150,000 or more in LA. Our lawyers that uh, uh, we're referred to, if we're accused of anything, uh, require a retainer 
as high as $30,000. Most teachers might have that money saved up after 20 or 30 years, but we were planning to use that to retire. Um, now, UTLA insists that they never had group legal insurance. Well, that doesn't make any sense. UTLA's been a union since 1971. Many of those in my situation remember when we did have group legal insurance, but that was at a time when we didn't actually need it. Now with the purge, we need it. The union had been um, uh, not merged, so uh, an employee had the, the right to choose either AFT or NEA, and most of us chose NEA. Well, we were just uh, merged, and the, uh, the ruling slate, headed by Michael Alex Caputo Pearl, used the lack of legal representation as a, um, as a weapon. Teachers were told, well, if you don't okay the merger, we can't have group legal insurance, and you could end up like the other 5,000. Now, they weren't that uh, awkward in expressing it, but that was the message. Um, let's see. UTLA, since it's also the biggest, has the largest strike fund in the state, if not the nation. Where there was $12 million in it. This money has been, uh, again, loaned to the union to prepare for strikes, which is not its stated purpose. Its stated purpose is to assist teachers in the event of a strike. Uh, three million has been used on general, general things that really needed to be fixed. Uh, 400,000 of that was spent on a school board race that was lost last go round, and it was again borrowed kind of surreptitiously. Supposedly it's being paid back. We're not sure. Now the same leadership headed by Caputo Pearl opposed the initiative to eliminate charter schools, which we've been working on for over a year. Um, among the leadership, retired board president, I'm sorry, retired UTLA president John Pettis sits on the board of a charter school. Now we don't know how much he's paid. Um, the union's answer is these teachers need representation. But as it's worked out, 1,000 charter school teachers are represented in court before the Public Employees Relationship Board, while 5,000 of us, who've been members for 20 or more years, are pushed out the door. So I kind of cringe whenever anybody says union family because I don't know what kind of family would sell out, uh, say, your older uncle or your grandpa in order to uh, take care of somebody younger. Now, it, in UTLA, in LA, we call it teacher jail because it feels like jail. Um, oh, another important thing is that the school district, at the same time it's lost 20% of its enrollment to charters, um, and eliminated 5,000 senior teachers has taken on 23% more administrators. This is obviously, or it seems to many of us, that this is uh, spiking their pensions because if they retire as administrators through Cal State Teachers Retirement System, they get more money than if they retire as a teacher. Now, UTLA does spend money on lawyers, but the lawyers don't really have our best interest in mind. Uh, Public Employees Relationship Board, which oversees dismissal of teachers, ruled in 2015 in January that a teacher cannot be denied the right to investigate when they're up for dismissal. So a teacher cannot be denied the right to speak to colleagues. But the school district has ordered all of us not to speak to anybody not to students, not to colleagues, not to parents in the community. Uh, well, the awful thing is that UTLA just says, yeah, you gotta do what they say. And our lawyers didn't pick that up. I found mm -hmm. it out while I was doing a Google search and I let them know last month. So they finally 
issued a, a report on the ruling just reiterating what I told you, that we cannot be denied the rights to uh, investigate. So what this means is that most of the 5,000 have entered dismissal proceedings without any defense, any, uh, anybody in their corner. <clears throat> Among the other people in UTLA who are, uh, oh, connected to TFA, the president himself was among the first to serve with TFA. Uh, also, Steve Zimmer, who's the president of the Board of Education, Carl mentioned it, he was also one of the first to serve with TFA. Now, both of those people are, it appears they're being groomed for higher office. Both of them spoke at the AFT conference, which was a week or two ago. Uh, they both had prominent speaking positions. Uh, Mr. Zimmer delivered a, a speech that I've heard many times before in which he said that if they're coming after teachers, they're coming after our kids. If they're coming after teachers, they have to come through me. Uh, no, I think they walked right past him and he showed them which way to go. Um, now, UTLA has supported Zimmer's uh, political uh, campaigns. They spent about a million dollars on his campaign last time. He'll be up for re-election next year. So his campaign is gearing up and there's a good chance they'll spend another million dollars. Um, we don't know why they make these kind of decisions, but it seems that the foxes are now guarding the hen house. We have Alex, Alex Caputo Pearl coming from TFA. He talks a good game. He looks like a union boss, but when it comes down to fulfilling promises to members, nothing gets done. He actually told the teachers in teacher jail that what he would do is make it part of our negotiations with the school district, that teachers be given a fair hearing, that uh, cases be reviewed of all teachers who had been uh, dismissed, <clears throat> and that all of this would be subject to job action. Well, the, what that meant to me is that we could uh, have one-day strikes, two-day strikes, longer strikes, in order to get justice for t uh, teachers who are uh, falsely accused. Well, none of that happened. And it doesn't look like any of that will happen. Um, now, there's one more person, the executive director of, of uh, UTLA, also came out of TFA. It kind of sounds conspiratorial, like these people are Manchurians. Well, I haven't seen uh, evidence to the contrary. It, some of you might not know the, the movie The Manchurian Candidate. It was uh, made in the 60s and it uh, chronicled uh, a U.S. politician who was actually brainwashed in China <clears throat> and entered the U.S. political system and gained power. Well, I'm wondering if these people aren't in the same position. They didn't go straight to the top like uh, Michelle Rhee but they are now in charge of the largest school district in California and the second largest in the nation. So things don't look very good for career teachers at this point, and I think it all ties together. The more money you make by firing older teachers, um, the more money is available, available for privatization. Thank you. <clears throat>